months ago, Harry Styles of One Direction released his debut album, well, Harry Styles. When I came to find this album on Spotify, I realized that Harry was definitely not in his boy band state anymore. In fact, if iTunes and I were to come up with a specific genre that Harry created, it was David Bowie meets Elton John meets Paul McCartney meets any other soft rock artist you can ever think of. Now, don't get me wrong, soft rock is not a bad genre. In fact, I do like Paul McCartney, I do love Elton John, and David Bowie will always forever be a legend. It's just that, if done correctly, it can make someone feel more mature. And as for Harry Styles, I feel like he needed to grow out of the whole boy band scene if he wanted to pursue his own career. The bad news is... Harry is still pretty young. In fact, he was the youngest member to be admitted into One Direction as created by Simon Cowell. But if he sounded too old when he's already so young creating a mature album, it's not going to go anywhere. As far as the whole album is concerned, I think Harry did an excellent job for the most part. However, there are some songs that, as I mentioned before, slightly before, about the too old to be singing this thing. There are a few songs like that, but they're not the majority of the whole album. Harry's intro song to his album, Meet Me in the Hallway, it has a very eerie tone to start an album, but then again, it kind of introduces us to what type of genre that Harry is going to be using for the rest of the album. Personally, I didn't like the eerie tone at the beginning because it's not the song as a whole that was an issue. It was just that, for one thing, it didn't have to be so dark for something that was gonna get cheerier at some points of the album. And at the end, there's a point, like, at the, at the last 40 seconds, it sounds like the song is going to end at that point, which would have been great, but then for another 40 seconds, the song just plays the chorus again, which I did not find to be necessary at all. The next song is, of course, Harry's radio hit, or first radio hit, I should say, Sign of the Times which I've heard on the radio a couple times before listening to the album as a whole. And I do like it. I really, really like this song. Because this is a song about that tells the audience that there's going to be hardships, there's going to be bad times, but there's always going to be times that we're going to get out of that. Because this is life, and life is like a pattern. You're going to get hardships, but of course you're going to get over the bump. At some point. And this is like, I think Harry did this song on purpose because considering what's happening specifically in the United States right now, I think a lot of people need to listen to this song and use it as like a anthem for as long as we play our cards right, everything's going to be okay. The third song of the album, Carolina, this is where my point of old Beatles or Paul McCartney comes in because Carolina sounds like a Paul McCartney beat like Beatles Paul McCartney type song and that's not a bad thing because for Harry's case it actually sounds pretty darn good like this song is another like I oh my girl is from somewhere and she's great and all that type of song but it's really catchy and it's really, really fun to listen to. Like, you listen to the Beatles because they're fun. Like, that's what this song is supposed to do. It's supposed to be absolutely fun. At first, I didn't think I was going to like two ghosts. But then I started listening more to the story of the song. And I was like, Harry, were you waiting for a super long time to write this song about either Taylor Swift or Kendall Jenner 
Hopefully it's Taylor Swift because I don't want to imagine Harry dating anyone related to a Kardashian. Like, did you really wait for your debut album to write a song about that? Because if you did, it's pure genius. It's complete genius. Like, the point of this song is, is that a couple is breaking up, Harry being the guy of the relationship, and he's saying that as we're breaking up, we became two different people. And when you think about it, it could go either two ways. It could be changed for the worse, meaning that we're that we're right, even bitter, more or more bitter than we used to be. Or, as I like to think it, it's better because they're more they're wiser about how to be in a relationship and hopefully they can find people that connect with them better and hopefully spend the rest of their lives together in the future because clearly Harry's relationship with this girl in particular was not working. Okay, I think Sweet Cre Sweet Creature has to be my favorite song from this album. It's just so cute and it's so sweet for a soft rock song and it's and it's just it's one of those things that you can listen to wrapped up in a blanket either on your couch in front of the fireplace or on your like front porch or something it's on a on a nice nice summer day it's it's one of those songs that even though it's about young love and of course it's hard to be in a relationship when you're young it's but harry makes you feel good as you're, as he's singing about this. Because he wants you to feel good. He doesn't want to push you away from being in love in the first place because if you've never been in love before, like, how can you end up finding the one in the future? Like, I know there are some songs out there that talk about young love being like, oh, I'm not ready for this, maybe I should wait. I think Harry's song does service for that because he's talking about you shouldn't give up on something. You shouldn't give up on this because even though you might be like ending high school soon, like you still think you're too young to know what going on a date is like. And for Harry's case, that that's not what he's saying. He's saying that you should go out there. You should go, you should try, you should build your relationship type skills. And that's what I love about Sweet Creature. Only Angel is one of those songs that it starts out making you believe it's about one thing, but then it transitions to something so different that it works. Like, Only Angel kind of reminds me of Elvis Presley's um, Devil in Disguise, but... Harry, but it's not Devil in Disguise. It's Harry's version of saying, Oh, you are, you are so sweet to me, but you could be a devil in the sheets if you know what I mean. Okay, that, that eyebrow thing was super creepy. I won't ever do that again. I'm sorry. But, it, but anyways, I, I liked how the intro, but then the verses contradict with each other. Like, I just loved that, that complete setup because it does talk about the angel aspect, but it could talk about the angel aspect in a rock type setting. And it was, and it had this like Elton John style, which I found to be awesome. Kiwi is the shortest song on the album. And I think it's Harry's weakest song on the album it's, as well. It's not the shortness that bothers me because you can have a short song being like two minutes and 50 seconds, but you can still make it good to listen to. The problem with Kiwi is the verses are pretty short and the majority of the song is the pre-chorus and the chorus, which gets very repetitive very quickly. And then you're just sitting there like, what's the point? of having the chorus repeat for the majority of the two minutes and 50 seconds. Like, that's not what a short song is supposed to do. So that's my, basically my issue with that. It's not the worst song I've heard, 
but it's definitely not the strongest work on this album. Ever since New York was just a reminder to me that this is a new new style for Harry Styles. Because when, when I first heard this song and he started singing, I was just like, are you sure that's Harry's voice? Because that did not sound like him at all. But then I started li listening to it closer and closer and I was like, oh yeah, this is still Harry, but it's just... This is the song that completely contradicts its style to what Harry had been used to ever since the start of One Direction, basically. Like, Her like we were so used to Harry doing, like, this very boy band poppy type thing about, oh, you're my, you're the only one for me and stuff like that. But then with Since New York, it's definitely gotten, like, a lower sort of dark tone, which, like, as I said, reminds us that this is a new Harry Styles. This is the Harry Styles that he wanted to show us. Not the, um, type of One Direction Harry Styles that he had been for the past couple years. I think the second weakest song on the album, like, behind Kiwi in this case, had to be Woman, because, like Kiwi, it had short verses, and the song, like, the majority of it is taken up by the pre-chorus and the chorus. It, well, there's not really much of a chorus anyway, it just repeats the word woman for a couple of, couple of beats. I don't th find the song to, that song to be too terrible, but if you're looking for one of the more, like, catchier pieces, I do recommend the songs that I mentioned earlier, and not, and not much this one. Because again, I didn't find this to be strong to the album at all. It's, I mean, instrumentally it works. Lyrically, it just makes the instrumentals think, say that they can survive, like, on an instrumental track, then, or an instrumental album, then just an album full of lyrics. The last song from The Dining Table made me listen to it twice, because at first I kinda didn't get it. My second time though, it, I came to the conclusion that this is the type of song that you could probably listen to at a coffee shop, because it's what it's one of those like, slow going, like, you're just doing nothing type songs, but it's meant to make you feel comfortable. Like, comfortable in a way that you're just probably at the dining table, like, having breakfast, like, cream, like, bagel with cream cheese and a cup of coffee. And it's kind of repetitive also, but it's not as bad as Kiwi and Woman, I would say. Like I said before about Carolina, I think this song was supposed to be also fun, but it's a different definition of fun. It's like more of a relaxed type of fun. Overall, I rate this album an 8 out of 10. Because there are some of the songs that could be hits for some people, but misses for other people. But like I said, I don't find the songs that I mentioned that to be weak bad. Like, trust me, there are a lot worse songs out there on different albums. I'm just, these are just my opinions. Like, I don't have to be, like, a fan of songs that everybody else likes. You don't have to be a fan of songs everybody else likes. We're all human beings. But however, as, as a debut album, I think Harry went strong. He presented this strongly. And you know that he definitely is, or does not want to be, boy band frontline Harry Styles anymore. He definitely wants to mature into something that he wants to do instead of what Hollywood or what other companies there are ha there are want him to be for the teenage demographic. Like so Harry Styles, I give major kudos to you. So, if you guys liked this little album review and want more, 
maybe you can give the like button some love or and or you can comment in the comment section below um what al what other pop albums or not even pop albums just other albums in general that i should look at that i might find interesting or you really really want me to do because trust me i'll go look at it i will and if you're interested in my other videos or or not i just highly suggest you go check my other videos out and such and if you haven't done so already click the subscribe button for some fun content that I will be showing in the future. I'm Kate Sharon. and it's been real. Bye bye!